Hey y'all, I'm Paula Dean, and I'm so glad you joined me today in our new kitchen. You know, Michael and I thought there's no better way of christening this new kitchen than with some of our family's favorite comfort foods. And today I'm gonna be starting off with a hearty old-timey beef stew. It's just a bowl full of delicious flavors. It's gonna warm you inside and out. And then I'm gonna be making a rich and creamy potato casserole that's guaranteed to make you stop and smile and go back for seconds. And for all you chocolate lovers out there, wait till you see my chocolate bread pudding. I guarantee y'all it's gonna become one of your favorites. So grab a blanket and get ready to eat, cause I'm about to show you the most comforting foods imaginable. Good morning, everybody. Today is a very, very special time for me. Today is the first Paula's home cooking to be shot in mine and Michael's new kitchen. And I can't wait to share it with y'all. In fact, I could do a 30 minute show just showing you around. Michael and I decided to put a lot of our space and a lot of our money into the kitchen. Naturally, this is the biggest room in the house because this room is the heart of the house. So I look forward to spending many years with y'all in this room. I hope that you're gonna love it as much as I do. This room makes me feel so good and so at home. And that's what today's recipes are all about, comfort food things that you, make you feel good and safe and, and warm your belly. And the first dish that I'm gonna start with today is an old-timey beef stew. I've got some beef stew meat here waiting on me. Now you can also use a chuck roast. A boneless chuck roast makes fabulous beef stew. But for convenience, we've already gotten the beef stew meat. I'm gonna break it apart and I'm gonna pepper it and give it a little salt. Just kind of toss that around. I'm gonna add like a couple of tablespoons of an oil. And we're just gonna kind of sear our meat off. Mmm, I can't hardly wait. Today is just a perfect day for this kind of dish. And I'm gonna add an, a sliced onion. I'm gonna add some paprika. That'll just make it richer and deeper in color. And I'm gonna add a teaspoon of sugar. Now you'll wanna be careful. You don't wanna add too much of that. And I'm gonna add just a little pinch of allspice. And I'm gonna add one clove of garlic and I'm just gonna bust it like that. And I'm gonna give that a quick stir. Two cups of water, and then I'm gonna put the lid on it. And I'm gonna let this cook for probably about an hour and a half until the meat is fork tender. But before I close the lid on it, I'm gonna add like, like a tablespoon of Worcestershire. Throw in a couple of bay leaves. And that's all it is to it. It's ready to go. But for right now, we're just gonna let it cook away. We're gonna move down here and we're gonna make that potato casserole that's so stinking good. Okay, so we're gonna start our potato casserole by sauteing some wonderfully sweet, fresh red bell pepper and some onions in a stick of butter. Now while that's sauteing, I'm gonna move down here and I'm gonna spray our pan lightly so it won't stick to the bottom. Now I'm gonna take our mashed potatoes from yesterday and just put them in the bottom of our casserole dish and I'm gonna just kinda smush them down. And then I'm gonna take about a cup of sour cream and I'm gonna layer on top of those mashed potatoes. and just like frost them. And I'm gonna take a little of my house seasoning and just sprinkle on there because sour cream is so not salty. So I wanna just flavor up that sour cream. And let's come down here and see how our onions and bell pepper are doing. 
because I want to put some of this butter throughout the casserole. I don't want it to go on just the layer of mashed potatoes. So we're going to turn that off and I'm going to come down here and just <laughs> take those onions and bell pepper and place them on top of that sour cream. And some of the butter, like half the butter, look at that. So this is what we look like so far. Now you know those leftover potatoes? I've sliced those and we're gonna just take those and lay those on top. I like using the sliced because it gives a different texture. All right, now we're gonna come back and take the rest of our butter and I'm gonna drizzle that on top of those yummy sliced potatoes. Mmm. And I'm gonna come in with another little bit of house seasoning. <laughs> Y'all are not gonna believe this, but I forgot to put the cheese in after the vegetables. But you know what? I'm just gonna go ahead and do it on top. And I'm gonna just have extra cheese on top and it's gonna run down there and it'll be all right. All right, now we're gonna put this in our oven, a preheated oven at 350 degrees, and we're gonna let it bake until it's hot and bubbly. So we're gonna have to run for a minute, but when we come back, I'm gonna be finishing up the beef stew, we're gonna be tasting the potato casserole, and you're not gonna believe what I'm fixing next. A chocolate bread pudding. <laughs> Makes me want to cry. You don't want to miss this one. So in case y'all have just tuned in, today's show is all about comfort food. I've got a pot of beef stew going here. I've got a potato casserole in the oven. And then I'm fixing to make the most knee-slapping, wonderful chocolate bread pudding you've ever tasted. And right now, I wanna just check on my beef stew. Oh, and it looks so good. Delicious. I'm gonna add just a wee little bit more liquid to it. All right, so at this point, the meat is really getting nice and tender, and I'm just gonna toss in the carrots and celery. And so this is really gonna be a nice one pot meal. So this looks yummy. Look at the meat, it's just like fork tender. And I, I leave the bay leaves, I leave the bay leaves in there. All right, let's see if our casserole is ready, which it is. Oh, it smells scrumptious. Oh, and look, oh, it's bubbly, bubbly hot. And you can see that this dish is really not all that buttery. So I'm gonna top it with crisp fried bacon chunks. With that beef stew and that gravy all on these, they are gonna be out of this world. All right, so let's move on to the bread pudding. I know a lot of you have probably had bread pudding, but a lot of you have probably not had chocolate bread pudding. And this was a recipe that was shared with me uh, from a friend that lives in Philadelphia. Her name is Bobby and she's a caterer. And she gave me this recipe one day and she said, Paula, you just have to try this. You're not gonna believe how good it is. So sure enough, I made it and it was to die for. Now what I've done is I've just taken a loaf of French bread and we're gonna cube it up and put it in a buttered bowl. And you don't have to be real precise with this. And this is one of those great dishes that will give you the opportunity to use up bread that's getting old on you. Bread really doesn't have a long life to it. Okay, so we've got all our bread cut up. Now we're gonna mix up our dry ingredients together. I have a cup of granulated sugar, one cup of light brown sugar, and a fourth of a cup of cocoa powder. You'll wanna mix your dry ingredients together 
so that they won't lump on you. Okay. So over here I have three cups of milk. And to our milk I'm going to add a fourth of a cup of heavy cream. I'm going to add a half a cup of a coffee liqueur, which is going to give this a fabulous bite with that chocolate. And then I'm going to add about two tablespoons of almond flavoring. I'm going to add two tablespoons of vanilla flavoring. And then I'm going to add about a teaspoon and a half of cinnamon. And that's going to give it just a little, a little spicy taste. All right, and we're going to add six eggs to our milk. We're just going to lightly beat our eggs, and then we're going to add it to our milk and our cocoa. And then we're going to pour it over our sugar mixture. So this is going to be sweet and like a flavor of coffee. And the cinnamon, it's going to have several different wonderful flavors. I think you're going to just find this recipe is just absolutely perfect, especially for you chocolate lovers. All right, now I'm gonna just move my bread up here. And over my bread, I'm gonna add a cup or a cup and a half of chocolate chips. Maybe the only thing that I can think of that you could add to this dish that would be really, really delicious would be some toasted nuts or a couple of cups of, of pecans would really be yummy in it. All right, now, so I'm just going to pour our mixture, our egg and milk mixture, over our bread. And then I'm going to let this sit for about 20 minutes so that that bread can absorb that milk and that sugar and that chocolate liqueur. Mmm. Have y'all got the idea? You know this is gonna be delicious. So I'm gonna let this sit for about 20 minutes and then I'm gonna put it in a 350 preheated oven and we're gonna let it bake for about an hour. And when we come back, y'all, I'm gonna be tasting our fabulous beef stew and that yummy potato casserole. So y'all not gonna wanna miss this one. Okay, so this meal is really coming together. Welcome back, y'all. Can't hardly wait for you to see this chocolate bread pudding. So, in with that, and I'm gonna bring my potato casserole over here. My mama used to dust her beef stew in flour and that would make the beef stew thick. Well, I seared mine plain. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take a little cornstarch and water and mix those together. And when you're making this kind of thickener, you wanna make sure you use cold water to mix with your cornstarch. And we're just gonna mix that up real good so that everything's dissolved. And the most important part to this is when you're fixing to add your cornstarch mixture, you'll want to make sure that your pot is boiling really, really good. So here we go. You can see that the juices are really bubbling. And I'm just going to pour that in. And this is going to become thick very, very quick. Oh, look. Look how good that looks. A little bit more pepper. Michael likes things really kind of spicy. 
a little bit more salt because I want this to have a lot, a lot of flavor. And the vegetables I added for the, about the last 30 minutes of cooking because you don't want your vegetables to just dissipate. You want them to still have nice texture to them, be done but still kind of firm. So it's my favorite time of the show. It's time to taste. And I'm going to start by dipping into these hot, cheesy, creamy potatoes. Look at that, y'all. Look at that sour cream in there. And that butter. And that bacon on top. And then I'm going to just take my beef stew. Look. And I'm just going to put that right there. And oops, I let some of the gravy fall onto the potato. This is also wonderful over just a bowl of hot buttered rice. But as I said, I really wanted to use up my leftover mashed potatoes. And this is so hot. And remember, I told y'all I wasn't adding potatoes to this beef stew because I already had my leftover mashed potato casserole. Look at that. Mmm. There's just nothing, nothing that does it like a wonderful beef stew. You're going to love this recipe. So if y'all think this is comfort food, stick around because coming up next, I'm going to pull that bread pudding out and today's tip is going to be this fabulous sauce that's going to make your mama scream. Now, just when you thought that you couldn't get this any, any better, I'm gonna show you a trick. And we're very quickly just gonna make a sauce for it. I'm gonna start with two cups of heavy cream, a fourth of a cup of an Irish cream liqueur, a fourth of a cup of sugar, and I'm gonna let that heat up. I'm gonna take a little cornstarch, Mix it with a little water. And we're gonna tighten that up and it's gonna be a wonderfully rich, warm custard. Now you can actually make this three days in advance, put it in the refrigerator, and then pull it out when your bread pudding's ready. All right, it's boiling and we're just gonna pour in our cornstarch. I'm just gonna add about a teaspoon of vanilla. I really, really, really like to serve this over my bread pudding warm. Oh, see that hot cream going over those chocolate chips? How could this not be comfort? Oh, hear it gushing. If you wanted to, you could pour the sauce on each individual serving, but look in here. I just love, oh, it's hot. I just love the way that cream looks running all down in there. Well, I might have a little extra cream. There we go just in case. Mm. This is so good. You know, with or without the topping, you're gonna love this chocolate bread pudding, but make the sauce. Mm.
I'm so glad that y'all tuned in today. I hope, especially those of you that maybe live far away from home, have found comfort in some of these dishes that I've prepared today. You know, nothing says home like an old-timey beef stew or that potato casserole. My goodness, that chocolate bread pudding. All of this food is like getting a hug from home. So until next time, America, as always, I send you love and best dishes from my kitchen to yours.